Welcome to the second day of the EFD annual meeting. My name is Biela Tibesigua and I'm a senior research fellow within the EFD network and I am based at uh, Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. And today I am honored to introduce the keynote speaker, uh, principal economist, Dr. Menali Kasi. Now, Dr. Menali Kasi has over 14 years of research experience with sound knowledge on impact assessment tools, project management, and leadership. He is currently the principal scientist and head of the social science and impact assessment unit at the International Center for Insect uh, Physiology and Ecology, that is ISIPE. He is also a research committee within, uh, he is also a member within the research committee uh, within the EFD network and he's really a valuable asset and not only in EFD but in Africa and the rest of the globe as he has published over 78 articles in peer reviewed journal, uh, uh, journal, uh, journals and books. In Scoopers, Menali has an H index of 28 with over 7,000 citations. He is one of the most cited researcher in Elsevier and is listed in the top 500. And of course, it doesn't end there. Menali continues to amaze people. He continues to contribute to food security in Africa through capacity building, through resource mobilization, through research uh, that is needed to inform policy in the continent. And today, Menali will discuss how insects can assist with green growth and development. Very thought provocative title. Please let's welcome Dr. Menali Kasi. Thank you, Ayala, uh, for uh, your kind introduction. Uh, good morning and good evening, good afternoon, colleagues and friends, wherever you are. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, uh, Thomas and Gunnar for giving me this opportunity. My initial thought was to present a paper in the parallel session but they asked me to <clears throat> give a keynote speech related to the paper that I was uh, intended to present to the annual meeting. So I hope you are hearing me. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can, Menali. Okay, thank you very much. So today uh, uh, I will talk about on the role of insect uh, for uh, green growth or uh, green agriculture. Um, specifically, uh, I will try to share you the ECPS experience and any evidence on the mini livestock as insects uh, on their role on the carbon footprint and natural resource management or use efficiency on waste management and environment, their role on waste management and rebuilding the natural capital, uh, particularly um, uh, land. And also I would like to give you some evidence on the role of uh, insects on socioeconomic um, uh, welfare, uh, focusing on nutrition and health benefits and poverty and economic development. At the end, I'll try to summarize what insect can offer to the world and then what we need to do to widely use insect uh, globally or in the continent. So uh, before I jump to my presentation, um, I would like to show you a video, a three minutes video, uh, which can help me to set a stage for my presentation. Uh, as well as it gives you uh, practical information how we are producing insects and then how we are uh, utilizing them. ICP is a center of excellence in Africa for research and capacity building for insect science and its application. The most expensive ingredient in feed is protein, and the most common source of protein is fish meal, and insects offer a great alternative to fish meal. Scaling up insect-based feed technologies will have a huge impact 
in improving poultry, fish, and pig production. We make feed that has got carbohydrates, proteins, and also other sources of energy. From the black soldier fry, we can manufacture feed of very high quality, which results into egg production and better growth rates for broilers and also pigs. Also, there will be increased job opportunities and improve livelihoods. We have trained many farmers here at ECP, and most of the farmers are mass rearing this insect for commercial purposes. My staff and I went for training. We came back, set up our own insectary with ECP's assistance. We have managed to have a full cycle of uh, insect production whereby we are feeding BSF up to 20% of the total feed. The fish that we have, the BSF can help raise them to this size at reduced cost from the normal. Apart from using black soldier fly larvae in feed formulation, it can also be fed directly as fresh or dried larvae. Poultry farmers have enjoyed significant increase in egg production and egg quality with the use of insect-based feeds. Uh, since I started using these insect-based feeds from our millers, I have realized more profit. The eggs have increased in number and my hands lay for a longer time. Pig farmers have also benefited from the use of insect-based feed technologies. We get an average of about 85 kilos within five months, something that we were taking up to six, seven months to achieve. We are very happy with that result. Our feed costs have gone down significantly, especially because the black soldier flies have proven to be a very good protein source with all the required amino acids for pig production. Besides the production of insect-based feeds, ECP has also developed mass rearing technologies of insects for food. Insects are very rich in crude protein, ranging between 35 to 73%, which is comparable or superior to that of beef, fish, and many plant protein sources. Insects are also very rich in amino acids and fatty acids, as well as several micronutrients. We also extract high quality oil from this insect that can be used for cooking and baking. These edible insects can be used to prepare many tasty delicacies that are delicious, tantalizing, and mud watery and irresistible to many consumers. We strong okay, um, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, that gives you a lot of information. Uh, my role will be now to give you some statistics as an economist uh, that helps us maybe to to inform policy, uh, to inform donors and others. So uh, globally, uh, this you can see the distribution of uh, recorded uh, uh, edible insects, uh, where you can find it almost uh, uh, as a world except in uh, uh, near, an absent nearly in um, the world, uh, Western world and then a the part of uh, uh, Russia, Russia. Uh, of course, uh, the, the nearly absence in the Western world that does not necessarily mean we don't find insects in supermarkets. Uh, luckily enough, there are a number of uh, advocates and research organizations in the Western world that, uh, who are doing uh, insect-related uh, research. Which kind of insects we're eating? Uh, you can see here, <clears throat> There are a number of insects, over 2,000 insects are uh, edible uh, globally. Uh, you can find that here also, it's not here, cricket is, is a part of the grasshopper and locust, which we misdid when they revised their, their recent uh, data. But uh, we have almost two, over 2,000 insects globally that can be used as a food and as a feed.
But despite this, uh, we human being, uh, we are obsessed on animal-based protein or meat, egg, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then as you can see it's from this uh, figure, the coming by 2020, uh, by 2050, the uh, animal-based protein will increase closely by 70%. Uh, this, the, the lion share of increasing is uh, from the developing countries uh, for an, uh, because of population growth, per capita income increase, and then also uh, globalization. It's only about 30, 20, 25, between 20, 30%. Uh, the growth that we'll see in the global uh, north. It's not only the animal-based protein are increasing, but also the stable uh, food crops demand is also increasing uh, globally, as you can see it uh, from this figure. What does this entail is to meet this growing demand, uh, it will, we're gonna put a pressure on our natural resources like land, uh, water, energy, uh, and then also, of course, biodiversity, and then environmental degradation. Uh, if we are going to pursue uh, with the existing uh, uh, food production uh, system, so, so not only that, food production also contributes to, as you all are aware, it contributes to greenhouse substantially to greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, as well as uh, environmental degradations, because uh, we went to, with the increase in uh, uh, protein demand, which means there will be an increase in a number of inputs, uh, including feed, uh, fertilizer, uh, chemicals, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So in the animal production system, 70, 60% of the total production cost is Feed, which is huge. The rest of the inputs are uh, very minimal. Uh, especially uh, protein, uh, the current conventional protein sources are fish meal and soybean meal. Uh, most of the time, uh, the feed millers, they are importing them from outside. <clears throat> In addition to those, uh, so the fish meal and then the soybean meal, also the livestock are competing with the human uh, food supply because as you can see it on the right side of the figure, the cereals, root crops, legumes, and oil crops are also uh, forming a part of uh, the animal feed, which means this may have a repercussion on the food security of other poor people, especially uh, in the global north, if we don't use some other alternatives uh, to, to as, as those alternative source of feed and, and then protein. But also, like as I said, with the increasing demand, uh, which means we are going to more gonna contribute in the coming decades on a greenhouse gas emission, uh, which has also again uh, uh, an, an impact on the economic growth and development of uh, uh, the globe. It's not only, of course, if you can able to mitigate, for instance, the greenhouse gas emission, maybe using some other technologies, but still uh, we have a problem on the livestock sector uh, because of an increase in the price of feed and also as animal product, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's we, we see an increasing trend uh, over time. It's not only that, there is also a decline in arable land, which means if you want to meet uh, the global food demand, either we have to expand the land to the marginal land, or we have to uh, move to the uh, uh, reserve land, the forest land. Uh, not only that, the natural resource, especially the fish, uh, which is a major uh, feed uh, component of the livestock is also dwindling uh, substantially, as you can see it uh, from this figure. So what does this mean? If we have a natural resource scarcity, if we have this uh, a greenhouse gas emission, to meet the growing demand for uh, animal protein, 
and another foot, which means we need to look for an alternative uh, protein and feed sources uh, which are environmentally uh, friendly. That's why now, recently, uh, insects, the insect industry is becoming an emerging industry, uh, both in the global north and the global uh, uh, south. So what insects can play in reducing uh, the carbon uh, footprint compared to the conventional livestock is uh, something that I, I'm gonna show you now. As you can see it here, as you can see it here, uh, that com compared to the conventional livestock like beef and chicken, uh, you can see insects and another uh, crickets and another insects. Their feed demand requirement is very very less compared to the other common. It's not only their feed uh, demand is less but their efficiency to convert their feed into biomass is very high. As you can see, it is almost 80%, which means all parts of the insects are edible compared to uh, beef and, uh, <clears throat> and chicken and uh, pork and another uh, livestock. Uh, <clears throat> this means insects, uh, it can reduce the pressure on land uh, it can reduce the pressure on, on, on uh, biodiversity because we don't need more land to produce a feed for a livestock. And then of course, it can also reduce uh, the biodiversity loss because when we need less feed, when we need less land, we may not apply uh, fertilizer, chemicals, and then we don't uh, expand uh, land uh, to, 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 to produce more feed. Of course, environmental degradations, uh, because of soil erosions and nitrification and acidification, because we, we because of the use of uh, uh, inorganic fertilizer, uh, will be uh, reduced. Not only that, you can see here also in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, in terms of carbon dioxide, in terms of ammonia, methane. You can see uh, the small insects, uh, crickets, mealworms, locusts, and then others they emit less compared to the conventional uh, livestock, as you can see it uh, from this uh, figure, which means this small creature, uh, they can contribute to produce uh, food in a sustainable manner compared to the other livestock, compared to the conventional ones. And then when you can see the energy use, the water use, the land use, it's the same story where those small creatures to produce a kg of their meat, they require less energy, they require less water, they require also land use, which means in an area where you have land scarcity, uh, this is an, uh, so a better option to move on to insect production than to focus more on the conventional livestock, on the big animals like cattle pigs uh, and then others. So all this tells us uh, how efficient are these insects in terms of using our natural resource. In terms of waste management, which is also as a mechanism to reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emission and then uh, the environmental degradation is insects, they convert waste into, uh, into a valuable resource that is into high quality protein and high quality feed. As you can see it, the, the global uh, organic waste uh, production is increasing substantially over time. And then of this, the lion share is uh, the food and the, the green uh, waste, which, are, which is an important source of uh, feed for the life, I mean, for, uh, to, uh, for insect uh, rearing. And then this, as you can see, it's also this uh, 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 organic waste, they emit a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, including uh, the carbon dioxide, which means the insect, they can convert this before such kind of waste is causing a problem on the environment, on human health and animal health. This can be seen here, you can see it from this figure, 
The feedstock can easily be converted for instance, it's a black soldier fly, uh, larvae, uh, black soldier uh, fly, which is a very small uh, insect. The larvae can easily convert the feedstock, the organic feedstock. This could be from byproduct, food waste, the chicken drops, the pig drops, the manure, and then the human waste, and then other wastes into, uh, into a larvae as a protein feed. And then from this, from the production of the animal feed, a very good byproduct so that you can produce is uh, the organic fertilizer, wh which is a high quality organic fertilizer, uh, which mo mo sometimes is better than, depending on the substrate they're using, is better than the, uh, uh, the, the inorganic uh, fertilizer. And then this organic fertilizer, of course, you can use it to produce uh, staple crops, uh, vegetables, and products. Of course, as you can see it on the right side, the black soldier flies also, they emit less greenhouse gas emissions compared to foreigners than the soybean, which is a major source of, uh, of, of protein feed uh, for the livestock. Just to see some impacts of this, uh, the organic fertilizer that you produce uh, as a byproduct from uh, insect farming for animal feed, you can see how they can substantially increase the productivity of uh, the various vegetables, especially when you combine them with inorganic fertilizers, we can, uh, we can considerably increase uh, the productivity of, uh, of various uh, vegetables uh, and then others. And then when it comes to also, we have also done some experiment how it can increase the health of the maize. You can see it where you, where you have a base, base safe, uh, the chlorine, uh, the chlorophyll content of the maize is high because a healthy maize me means a high productivity of maize, which means it can be also used for other crops, not only maize, but uh, this is the kind of experiment at ECP uh, currently uh, we, we are conducting uh, through our PhD students. So what does this mean? Producing locally your organic fertilizer especially given fertilizer is, is an expensive uh, product for the many poor farmers in the global south. And then uh, given the foreign currency problem of uh, many developing countries, this is a big opportunity to use insect to produce uh, uh, organic fertilizers. Of course, not only the currency issue, but it can also uh, directly contributing to, uh, to use our resources in a sustainable manner, uh, especially uh, the land, uh, which is a very scarce resource. And then besides this also insects, they can contribute directly or indirectly uh, as a nutrition and, and, and uh, they provide a direct and indirectly nutrition and health benefit. Uh, as we speak, uh, we have millions and millions of uh, people who are uh, malnourished. So insect can, also, can, can, can play a big role uh, to mitigate this the global uh, malnutrition. How? You can see we uh, tried to test a number of insects um, uh, in terms of their uh, various uh, nutrient content. You can see it, the conventional uh, source of uh, uh, feed for animal or of course for human also, for fish meal, cotton seed cake and sunflower meal, you can see most of the insects, they perform much better than the uh, conventional ones in terms of uh, crude protein. You can see it down, the English name is at, at the bottom if you can see it. So which means those producing those insects using the waste product, uh, they can substantially contribute to uh, protein for both animal and for human consumption. It's not only crude protein, they have other nutrients content, especially the kilocalorie, which is higher than the one that we can get from maize, which is currently used as a feed uh, for livestock uh, globally. It also contains essential amino acids, which are really a very limiting factors from plant and animal-based uh, sources and then these essential amino acids are also uh, contribute to increase uh, the productivity of the livestock, but they are limiting on the conventional uh, feed sources. You can also see on the 
Apchitin uh, is also a very good substance, especially uh, to protect uh, the crops uh, from uh, disease. Not only that, as you have seen it from the video, you can produce really high quality oil as well, uh, 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 even uh, from the harmful insect. For instance, desert locust, as we speak, it's now damaging all kinds of green vegetables here in Eastern Africa. But if we could have harvested, if instead of we kill them using spraying, which has an impact on environment and human health, it could have been better to develop a harvesting mechanism and convert this into an opportunity like oil and creating employment. And then of course, uh, creating opportunity, livelihood opportunity uh, for smallholder farmers. Uh, the oil, as you, can, as you are aware, the uh, global oil market is huge and then it's expanding. So the insect production really can contribute to this uh, expanding market. You can see here the different insects there in terms of oil production, uh, including the harmful ones, that's a pest, that is a locust, which is a crop pest, also can produce high quality uh, oil. And then this insenene is uh, as you, as a long uh, horned grasshopper, uh, which is common in Uganda. By the way, it's a very expensive one compared to uh, beef, but it also produces a high quality uh, of, 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 of uh, oil. Also other insects like fruit flies, which is a pest for mango and avocado, also they can contribute uh, to produce oil. Also here you can see crickets are also, they generate uh, uh, an important oil for consumption of uh, human beings. And then also in terms of fatty acid, you can see they produce, which is very important for uh, a number of uh, heart disease, cholesterol, blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. So this is small creature. Uh, compared to sesame and the oil, uh, which is a major source of uh, this omega-3, you can see the insect is a small insect. They perform much better than uh, uh, on the, the conventional uh, source of this uh, uh, omega uh, fatty acids. This is also in terms of their contribution, uh, percentage contribution. Uh, so in terms of saturated fatty acid, uh, monosaturated fatty acids, uh, you can see it how this insect is, <clears throat> including here maybe, I don't know if you can see it, folar mior, uh, the third insect uh, is also is, uh, a mess pest, which is now currently a damaging mess production. But instead of we kill them pests, maybe using chemicals, we could have converted them into uh, uh, human food uh, through different uh, processing mechanisms. Uh, not only those fat oils, fatty acid, but also you can see uh, we can generate uh, vitamin E. Uh, from these animals. You can see it uh, compared to sesame oil and olive oil. So the harmful one, the harmful insect like locust and fall uh, they, they they generate more uh, vitamin E compared to uh, sesame and olive oil. Uh, you can see also these antioxidants, which are very important. Most of the time, we, as you we know, we find it in vegetable and fruits, but as we speak, vegetable and fruits, they are very expensive. They are not affordable. Uh, to the poor people, but this is small insects, which we can produce them easily using waste products. Uh, they generate these antioxidants, uh, which are very important to protect um, damages of cells, uh, cancers, um, and, 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 and then other diseases. So you can see uh, how uh, these insects are really uh, beautiful in, in generating. It's not only that, um, Insects, either we can eat them directly or we can eat them uh, indirectly uh, by using them as a feed uh, for animals. So you can see here, we, we, we do some experiment on fish. Uh, you can see how the BSF is performing, especially when it combines uh, with the fish meal, uh, as you can see. So we can increase the productivity uh, with, uh, with the least cost. Uh, using those insects. Not only that, we can see also they can contribute to increasing uh, the weight gain of uh, the chickens, uh, as you can see it from this figure. We can also, as you have seen it from the video, the farmers, have, they already witnessed 
we can increase the egg production substantially. It's not only that, we can also increase the egg laying period uh, using uh, the black uh, soldier flies, uh, which is common, I think, globally. Uh, this, in terms of the socioeconomic, uh, we try to carry out a meso level analysis, a partial equilibrium analysis, uh, to show uh, the potential of uh, replacing uh, the conventional feed sources uh, with a uh, black soldier fly larva meal. This is uh, we published it, and then this is what we find. Only if you can use only in the commercial poultry sector. If you replace it, the uh, the protein soybean fish meal and maize grain by five to 50 percent, we can lift the, can, the Kenyan economy uh, by 16 to 150 million uh, per year. This additional income can help us to lift uh, about 0 0.7 millions of people uh, out of poverty. And then we can also save a foreign saving by substitution of the inorganic fertilizer and the feed imports. It's not only such substitution is also has implication on, uh, on, on, on climate change. Can you reduce the transport, which means you reduce your energy. And then of course, <clears throat> you are converting waste into a valuable product. The greenhouse gas emission also uh, can go down. Not only that, like as, 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 I show, as I've shown you, we can produce a huge organic fertilizer, uh, just between 2,000 and 1,800 tons, only by uh, using this uh, black soldier uh, fly larva meal in the commercial uh, polluter sector. Of course, we can also increase the food security, as, as I said, because the area taken by soybean and maize, and then the fish used for an animal feed, they can be, con they can be used for uh, uh, human consumption. So uh, uh, we can increase the number of food secure people, which already we have many food secure people here in Kenya. And then of course, uh, as, as I've said, we can recycle uh, a huge organic waste. Uh, as you can see it, millions of tons, uh, which is uh, almost 57% of the bio waste in Nairobi. This is only, if you can replace that 5% level, we can remove 50% of uh, the Nairobi uh, bio waste, or we can convert the Nairobi bio waste into a useful uh, product, uh, which can increase uh, the, uh, the, the, G G the, the GDP of uh, Kenya. Of course, if we can increase the climate change effect, the water use efficiency, the waste disposal costs, the health effects, the crop protection effects, the benefits can increase uh, substantially. So this shows uh, uh, some important evidence uh, to promote, um, uh, to inform policymakers and donors uh, to invest more on, on insect uh, for feed. In general, you can see what insects can offer to the wallet. It touches almost the three dimension of sustainable development. It can have an impact on animal health. It can have an impact on plant health. It can have an impact on human health. It can have an impact on environmental health. It, it takes almost the 17 uh, sustainable uh, development goals. This small mini livestock. So what, what can we do? for this insect to fly or for this technology to fly and benefit uh, uh, the wider community, especially the poor people uh, in rural uh, areas. I think still we need to generate more data and evidence on various aspects of insects because uh, the benefits of this insect uh, depends on what kind of input we are using, the substrate, the waste, and then benefit also varies by agroecology. So we need to generate uh, 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 more data and an evidence to convince donors, to convince uh, uh, more uh, uh, governments. Of course, as you can see, uh, this is uh, an insect switching from the conventional diet to, 
to a new diet. It takes for a while. So more public awareness, uh, especially in the Western world, uh, is very important because if you can convince the Western world, which means more money can flow into the research for development of insects for feed and for food. And then, of course, to introduce insects into the economy, into the agri-food system, uh, enabling uh, policy environment has to be created. Uh, we need policy reform and legislations. Uh, we are uh, thankful here in Fokenia government, Uganda government, Rwanda government. Now we don't have a problem to introduce insects as a feed and then food in these countries uh, because they have developed their own standard. And then and now we are pushing to other countries other countries to follow these uh, three countries. Of course, we need to develop a good business model like any other uh, commodity uh, so that we can develop its value chain. <clears throat> and capacity development, because it's an emerging industry, it's an emerging uh, insect, uh, we need to do more capacity develop uh, to integrate this insect into uh, the food uh, value chain. Of, of in the global south and in the global north. Of course, most of the insects, we harvest them wild, which means if you want to, the, the poor people to benefit from this insect, uh, we need to uh, protect forests and uh, reserved areas, uh, probably through various uh, incentive mechanisms. And then of course, we need to do more research, like as I said, so uh, we need to strengthen investment. We need to uh, increase the flow of fund uh, into this uh, uh, emerging uh, industry. I think with this, uh, I will wind up uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Menali, for that very interesting uh, presentation. I will now open the floor for discussions. Uh, but before I do that, I actually just wanted to make a quick note, Menali. So uh, Senene is actually very popular in Tanzania as well, even among the EFD researchers at the University of Dar es Salaam. That is what they uh, snack on on a daily basis, if I must say. Uh, anyway, so that aside, um, I was curious about the map that you showed from the Center for Geoinformation on the number of edible insect species. And I was just wondering, um, the map, does it highlight the wild insects or is it uh, produced or farmed insects? Uh, it's, 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 it's both, it is including the wild insect as well. And then by the way, this, uh, the Wageningen University, they are updating this on a regular basis. The first uh, map was on 2012, now the second one is in 2017. Uh, they get information, they are updating this. So I'm sure there are many insects out there uh, that can be uh, mapped maybe in the future when the resources are available here. Thank you. Uh, and then, so I'm gonna uh, take the first question. I've got question from both the chat session section and the question and answer section. And I see there's one question that has been asked by both uh, Daniel Sludge and Guna. So I'm going to ask you that question. And so uh, what they're saying is that if this insect production is such a win-win, um, why isn't it used more? Um, what are the factors holding it back? What are the policy instruments that are needed to capture at least some of these benefits? Mm. Well, I think, uh, thanks uh, uh, for this question. I think, uh, I think this uh, perception, attitude and knowledge issue uh, is, 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 a, is a holding factor. Uh, uh, but people, they see insects as just a, a disgusting thing. Uh, so we need to uh, break this uh, perception uh, by providing more information on the nutrition value of these insects. Uh, maybe through, uh, like as I said, through, through campaigns. Uh, <clears throat> and then the other thing is, of course, I think, uh, we need to do more work, actually. Uh, like as I said, this is an in fact uh, this, this is an emerging industry. Still, we need to have more evidence to show this uh, to the wider audience. But uh, for that, I think the, uh, the the major drawback, as we speak, okay, we have a number, we have some projects here, but the size of the project really they are small, uh, which uh, uh, we cannot do everything. Uh, of course. 
uh, other partners in the north and the north and the global north also they are doing more but to really increase the wider adoption of this insect I think more investment on this sector is required. And then the policy issue, of course, which we now, I think, uh, in, in Kenya, like as I said, in Kenya, Uganda, in Rwanda, now it's, it's coming up, it's, it's taking off, uh, especially after we, uh, after, after we got this, uh, the, the legislations and the standard. Uh, by the way, now even the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, now he take it into his own farm now. So that's a big thing for us. So I think we need to do, more publicity work, uh, we need to do more research, and then we need to show, I think, like as I said, the nutrition value of all these, uh, 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 maybe through exhibitions, uh, fair trades, etc. Et okay, um, then there's another question from uh, Maiti. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And uh, the question is, what are the biodiversity risks of growing or rather producing this insect on a large scale? So if we're looking at farming, whether it's commercial or smallholder farming, what are the biodiversity risks? The biodiversity, well, uh, if you say so biodiversity, is yes, the, biodiversity. I, I don't think we, instead they are enhancing the biodiversity. One, because they require less land, there is no more expansion of land. Uh, second, uh, which means if you are producing them on less land, and then if they require less feed, which means you don't need to produce more feed, because, and then if you don't produce more feed, which means you are reducing all sorts of these chemicals, fertilizers, uh, which is really affecting also uh, the biodiversity issue. So, so far, uh, the bio, we, we take the biosafety, we didn't see even a risk on human. So the, instead of, having a biodiversity risk, they are mitigating the biodiversity risk uh, currently going on because of this conventional agriculture, the conventional livestock production system. Interesting. And, and just to add on that, how do you see the health risk to human beings, especially if we're thinking about starting to farm or produce this? And if we are trying to maybe perhaps um, in the future encourage smallholder farmers to um, open up such systems, farming system, and if we think about how these um, insects are produced, um, do you see this as being a big challenge um, in Africa? Well, well I, I don't think it's gonna be a challenge because as we speak, we have some farmers, uh, both, uh, uh, I mean, here in Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania who are producing insects. Uh, especially uh, they are using this, uh, the spent grain as a brewery uh, by product, which really doesn't have any, 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 any smell or uh, any kind of uh, this disgusting thing. Uh, so uh, I think even for smallholder farmers, uh, if they want to be self-sufficient, especially on feed for their, uh, for their chicken, and then if you want to produce their own fertilizer at, at least, I think, uh, I don't, we don't see much uh, problem on smallholder farmers. It can be used for smallholder farmers. It can be used for, of course, if you want really to push this, which I always tell my biological scientists, if you want to scale up this technology, maybe the, the, the entry point could be more fertilizer, uh, given the food security situation of uh, the African continent. So if it can, can convince the government to invest for large scale, for large scale production or mass scale production of insect and fertilizer production, I think it's good to, to, to push it to more, to a large scale. If you want to go for fertilizer production, it's better to go a large scale production. So the entry for me, uh, instead of we push into feed, feed is okay. But if you can push it to fertilizer sector, it can easily also fly. I think uh, given fertilizer is a major input uh, for crop production and for security in sub-Saharan African countries. And then uh, another question um, that is from Tensai. Um, what does um, adoption rate look like? And uh, what is your opinion about um, the influence of culture and religion? Um, in switching to such diets? 
Well, uh, adoption, uh, I don't know. Okay, we recently sent uh, this uh, in EWS Act for an hour. To, uh, we have passed the second stage. Uh, we have produced some numbers. I didn't remember now the numbers, but we have quite good numbers here in Kenya and in Uganda because we started it recently. So, uh, uh, But we have uh, quite a, a number of farmers uh, who are currently using it, um, uh, especially in Kenya on this insect. In, in terms of culture, I think uh, uh, we carried out some uh, uh, a study on, uh, on, on on willingness to pay and, and the willingness to accept of uh, such kind of uh, uh, this insect for especially for feed. So what, what we find is it seems almost all the seventy percent of the sample household that we carried out here in Kenya and in Uganda, they seem they don't have a problem. Maybe here in Africa, because as you said at the beginning, we're yellow because this is a tradition. Eating termite, eating mice, in Senene is much common. Uh, we, we didn't see a, a problem on the, the culture. Of course, if we take it to Ethiopia, uh, it's gonna be a bit, a bit difficult. Uh, sometime back, and I had a very wide seminar presentation, so I was asking my colleagues in Ethiopia whether they have eaten insects or not. Everybody just keep quiet. But when I showed them a study, uh, because this uh, the local chicken they scavenge, so 30% of their diet was insect. So indirectly we are eating insect. What what we need to do where we have a cultural barrier is instead of to try to you to ask them to directly eat insect, just ask them to eat indirectly through chickens, through pottery, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So depending on the, the context, the cultural setting, we need to look for different options or different ways of entry point. For those who don't have a problem, we can push the insect directly. For those who have a problem, maybe indirectly through the pollutory and then other uh, animals. Uh, another very uh, interesting piece of information you provided, Menali, was to do with uh, oils and insects. And uh, so there's a question from Richard Mulua who's asking, what part of insect is processed to oil? And is the insect oil label as such? And what are the implications on consumption, especially to consumer without prior exposure? And is there uh, any well, we, 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 which part is consumed? I think uh, uh, maybe I'll, uh, I will communicate with Richard separate. I can ask my colleague, Biological I don't know exactly. Uh, but so far, uh, uh, we are not aware of, uh, well, I'm personally, I'm not aware of whether we are commercializing this one. Now we are, we are generating data, we are generating science. So now what we can do is we will look for a company like any other of our products who can, we can take over this one. Uh, we can provide all the evidence, uh, the production system, how they can produce it and see if they can commercialize it. Then of course the labeling issue will come. So all, all, all things boil down. Again, we need to do an awareness creation uh, uh, for, the, the, for the consumers uh, using a number of uh, uh, communication channels. Okay, I'm just gonna try and squeeze a few more questions. I mean, the more questions are popping up. This is very interesting. I personally have so many questions which I'll ask you outside this. Um, so uh, there is another question from uh, Saudimi Das. I, I, I hope I pronounced your name pro uh, uh, correctly. So uh, the question is, this year, India and Pakistan had serious crop and vegetation loss due to insects attack and pesticides and chemicals were used to control. Is there a way to convert such pest attack to a weeding situation? And I yes, think that's we also what... experienced that in East Africa as well. That is what I'm saying, locusts as we speak. In Eastern Africa, it is really ravaging all all kind of green stuff and fuller manure. As we speak, really, it's uh, damaging a huge areas of mess. As you have seen it from my slides, we can convert this to an opportunity. Locust can be eaten. I have tested it in Israel in January, it's tasty. Mm. We can also maybe use it to produce oil. 
The same is true for Larmior. I'm aware of uh, Senegalese, they do it for Larmior. And then it can also be, I think, promoted to, to the, the, the full army arm. So those kind of arm of insect, it can be converted, which means, as you said, it's a win-win. Instead of we spraying them, which is really uh, in Kenya, for understand when they spray locust, they kill the number of birds. Uh, we don't know, they could have, it could have also human health effect, which we are now uh, collecting data uh, to see the human health and then the environmental uh, uh, risk impact of this spraying chemicals to control the locust. So instead of spraying them, uh, if we can produce uh, a technology for mass harvesting, uh, we can convert them to an opportunity. To, we can use them as, as an alternative livelihood source of uh, income uh, for the poor in Pakistan and the global source, or maybe in other uh, global source countries. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Menali, for that very interesting and thought provocative uh, presentation. Um, I wish we could go on and discuss this further, but we've run out of time and uh, we need uh, people to have enough time to make their way to the parallel session.